Hello, back with another reaction. Uh, I want us to react to the confession of a sister who got attacked by a race warrior who actually punched her in the face and pulled out a knife and was ready to unalive her. But luckily, this sister got saved by a brave and uh, an amazing black brother. So I want, I want you all to listen to what she has to say and I will come in at the end with my reaction and you will understand how important a black man is in the black family structure and how important the black woman needs a black man in her life. I was attacked on Wednesday, the 11th of September around 7.45 p.m. I was working from the station, Irith station to be precise. I'm going home after a long day. And then I basically crossed over. I'm by the fish roundabout. Those that know Irith know where that is. I'm by the fish roundabout and I'm walking towards that, going towards where McDonald's is basically, but on the other side. And then I encountered this white male. He's walking towards me this time. I can see him from far away. He's walking towards me. So he's not doing anything that's alarming me. So I'm walking towards him and I'm on the phone. I've got my headphones on and I'm supposed to be meeting one of my um, dearest friends, Renee, because she, she this is my neighbor. So she lives, I'm number 69, she's number 70. We live in the same block. So I'm walking to meet her and he's walking towards me. As he comes towards me, as he's literally close, like I can see him now, he punches me in the face. Then I am stuck to, I'm like, what just happened? So I turn back to look like, did it just, did, I'm confused. So I'm turning back, I'm looking, I'm holding my eye. I'm like, what just happened to me? So I look at him and he stands there looking at me. He's staring at me and I feel like, you know what? This is trouble. I'm going to start walking. So I start walking backwards. As I'm walking backwards, he starts saying, what, what are you going to do about you black bitch? I excuse my language. Those that know me, I don't swear, but this is what he was saying to me. He was say, say, saying so many racial slurs towards me. And then he's like doing all of that towards me. Then he goes into his jacket or whatever he was. Like he was like, he was wearing, he was wearing all black clothing. Then he goes in and he pulls out a knife. And I said, no. So I start running, right? Thank God there was a traffic light not far away. So, and the, the traffic light was still green for the cars to come because we're coming like towards our direction. So I just said, is it for him or the cars? So I ran into the road. So I ran into the road and then they started beeping because I saw like, they were thinking like, why is this girl running to the road? But they saw him. So they started beeping at him, like beeping it was a truck and a few cars. They were beeping at him, but it happened so fast that they couldn't even stop to help me. So I'm there like, help me screaming. And I was terrified. Like, I thought, like, this man's going to catch me. I was terrified. I was so scared. I was like, is this it? Like, this is, this is going to happen today. Anyways, I am in the middle of the road at this point. So I'm looking around, like, who can see me? Help me. Like, I'm screaming from, like, do you know when you're really screaming that? Help me. So I'm looking around. And then I, there was this black man standing across the road from us. Then he saw, he saw, I think because there was cars going by, so he's trying to identify what's happening. So he saw, they started walking towards me, his name was Sam. Thank you, Sam, if you see this. He walked towards me and I, I, ran, I like, ran to him. Like, I just fell into him. Like, I'm like, help me. And he was like, do you know him? I was like, no, I don't know him. And he was like, oh, okay. So as soon as that white man saw the black guy, and this, mind you, this white man was quite skinny, not far off my height. I'm like five four, five five. He's like five seven, five eight. And then um, this, uh, the same gentleman, he's literally an angel. Um, he was probably like six four, big guy built. He saw him, then he ran off. Literally ran off. By the time I turned around, he was gone. Sam saw, of course, someone like, oh, he's gone. And then he was like, what did you saw? So Sam ended up going to retrieve my stuff that I had sort of dropped at the other side. Then I um, I was just standing, there, like literally by the traffic light, just shaking, shaking, crying, confused, terrified. I couldn't walk. Then Sam then held me. Then he held me walk to cross the road to the other side. Then he walked me and said, I, can I walk you home? I was like, it's okay, you can, but me and my friends, they're just like, she's just there. So he walked me towards where Renee was. And then, cause Renee was confused, why are you crying? Then of course we told her the story. It's crazy that this happens in 2024. And I've heard of stories where things happen to people, but this happening to me was so crazy. I just I just couldn't believe that this happened. But I thank God. Do you know God shows up at the right time? God will send somebody at the right time. So I always say prayer is so important because the prayers that my mother has made, I have made, my family has made when it comes to covering me, protection. 
it happened that day that God showed up and he brought Sam towards me to help me. Because imagine Sam never showed up. What could have happened? This could have been like a different story right now being told by somebody else but God said it's not my time so I'm grateful to God I'm grateful to Jesus Christ of Nazareth that one that I serve that he was there to protect me but what a scary situation imagine feeling like like my life is about to end like this crazy man don't care for my life like he doesn't care he doesn't care whether I live or die and he's willing to even take my life Anyways, I thank God I'm alive. And the police are now investigating. I pray the police come. That's another story for another day. But I just want to make sure that women be aware. Be aware of your surroundings. Some of this, like, racist, white men. I'm going to say men because all the men will attack me. Yeah? They don't care for your life. They don't care whether you live or die. They don't care. Be aware. Be vigilant. Pray. Stay prayed up. I'm telling you. Anyways, this is not going to ruin my weekend because I've got my sis's wedding coming up tomorrow. So guys, we're going to have a good weekend because God said it's not my time to die. He's going to give me another chance and I'm going to live it up. And I nearly allowed fear to come and hold me bound. But no, fear won't hold me bound. I'm still shaken, don't get me wrong. I'm still processing, but fear won't hold me bound. Okay, you heard her narrator's story. This was a very... Uh sad story i was quite sad and listening to that because she sound very hopeless but i'm happy it actually ended well had it been this black man wasn't there and had it been he wasn't a man of substance or man that you know a masculine man had it been he was one of these beta male he would have backed off and just mind his business just like a lot of people that saw her crossing the road and running, you know, calling for help, but they were just pressing on, you know, pressing the alarm, but they didn't, uh, they didn't come out of their car to assist this woman. Maybe because she didn't look like them. But here we get to see the importance of standing in solidarity with your own people. We will also notice this brother didn't think twice when the sister ran to him asking for help. He stood his ground and he actually took the sister and made sure she was in safe hands. He protected her. This is not something we see every day because the media structures and the powers that be have done everything to separate the black man and the black woman by pushing propaganda and poking, putting money in the pockets of a couple of influencers, uh, celebrities to push this agenda of toxic masculinity. But now we see how important the black man could be in the life of a black woman. When she started narrating a story, my first question was, where is your man you're a woman that seems quite mature you know of a certain age i wouldn't you know i'm not trying to age shame her but i noticed she was a very mature woman so why are you not with your man why are you not having a man around you okay maybe she would have gone for a straw but you could understand from the whole video she didn't mention like i went back home and i said and i explained what happened to my husband and this is what he said so i i came to understand she was a single woman now my question is is it one of these i'm um, strong i'm a black strong independent woman or is it just a woman that wasn't lucky enough in life to find a partner that took her serious i wouldn't judge her but the fact that this woman could be out there and being punched in the face and not having somebody to defend her really saddens me this is how far we have come as black people but i must commend the sister because she she showed a lot of gratitude towards uh, this uh, brother that actually stood up for her and she you know she didn't sound like this arrogant you know modern woman she sounded very very grateful so i understand she's a woman of culture she has a certain upbringing but she might have just been unfortunate to have a strong black man by her side but i'm sure with this experience she would have realized how important a black man is and you know right now we have this agenda for the, you know this agenda where they're trying to emasculate the, the black man and they'll talk about the the, the big tall strong uh, black man he's carrying and all that but guess what most of these race warriors, they can't stand the side of a black man because they know they are already defeated before they even engage into the war. So what did the sister say? As soon as he saw this black man, he took off running. He ran for his life. 
So these people have no, no balls, like they have no spine. They will attack a woman, but will never face a real man. They will never. And that is one thing I call these people cowards. They are big, like I'm sorry for the words, but they are cowards. Because a man that will punch a woman, that will put lay hands on a woman for me is already a coward. And then to racially profile a woman, attack her, tell her, what are you going to do? After punching her in the face and then pulling out a knife, trying to, to stab her. I think he's a coward. Then chasing her, running in between cars, you know, showing his determination to harm her. But as soon as he saw this brother, he took off running. That says a lot because he, could, he couldn't stand the sight of a strong black man. And like she said, the brother was built up. He was a strong, well-fit brother that could cause like real serious damage to the man and he took off running. So, you know, uh, I'm happy the sister, you know, was safe. I'm happy it didn't end up, you know, in a worse situation. But more so, I'm grateful for the brother for standing up for sister. I encourage any black man that sees a black woman in distress to stand up for her no matter what is happening within us here in the Western world make sure you protect the sister wherever you see her and i hope this is a lesson to all the sisters that think the diversers the ones that will go around criticizing black men and talking down on black men i hope this serves as a message to y'all we need each other nobody is perfect but it's by working together that we can better our imperfections and we need each other so let's not go around spreading this propaganda spreading this agenda because at the end of the day we are living in a world or we are living in the Western world that has so much aggression towards us, which means we must always keep an eye on each other. If not, we are doomed. And with the rise of the extreme right in almost all the Western countries, you don't want to be walking around just by yourself and doing any type of thing, you know, thinking because you got a couple of white friends, they're going to protect you. No, because they know the code. And when, it's, when it gets down, they will turn their backs on you like they never ever knew you. I'm sorry to say, but that's, those are the experiences I've come across. So when I'm doing my thing, I respect everybody, I love everybody, but I prefer myself. And I will stick with my people. So, yeah, man. So that's all I have to say about the video. I'm happy the sister is okay. And uh, yeah, and big shout out to the brother. So let me know what you think about this whole uh, situation in the comment section. Uh, please give us a like. And uh, if you consider subscribing to the channel because we are heavily, heavily shadow banned by YouTube. I don't know. I think YouTube got a vendetta against uh, black owned channels or pro black channels or pro pan Africanist channels. But we'll keep doing what we are doing. And uh, yeah, we are not here for the money. We are here to talk to our people, to enlighten our people. And nothing is going to stop us from doing that. So peace and see you on the 